I'm Michael Correa, and this is Psych Exam Review. In this video, we're going to look at some practice questions for sensation and perception. And before we go to the questions, a few quick reminders. Always try to come up with your own answer first. I'll pause after reading the question, but you might want to pause the video for a little more time, and then look to the multiple choice answers. Hopefully, you already know what you're looking for, or at least what you can eliminate right away. Also, be sure to review any other unfamiliar terms that appear. So I've written these questions, answer choices, and explanations to try to include as many terms as possible. So you want to make sure that you could also answer questions about some of those other terms that appear. Okay, so let's go to these questions. At the airport, Susan's suitcase weighed 25.1 kilograms, just over the airline's limit. She moved an item to her carry-on bag, which now felt heavier. The suitcase was now 24.9 kilograms, but when she lifted it, she couldn't feel a change. Which of the following best explains this? Absolute threshold, transduction, accommodation, Weber's law, or sensory adaptation? This would be Weber's law named after Ernst Weber by his student, Gustav Fechner. And Weber's law is that the just noticeable difference is a proportion of change, not a fixed amount. So the 0.2 kilogram change in Susan's carry-on can be detected because it's a large proportion of change, but for her suitcase, the same weight change is a much smaller proportion and therefore it can't be detected. Which of the following is not a Gestalt law? Common fate, simplicity, closure, convergence, or similarity? And this would be D, convergence. This is not a Gestalt law. Convergence refers to the angle of the eyes when focusing on an object. And it plays a role in depth perception. So if you have to point your eyes closer together, that angle tells you that the object is close to you. But if your eyes are looking more straight ahead, that tells you the object is farther away. A homunculus is a distorted representation of a person created by making body part sizes proportional to their corresponding areas of the retina, somatosensory cortex, glomeruli, cochlea, or occipital lobes. And this would be B, the somatosensory cortex. So the somatosensory cortices in the parietal lobes contain a map of the body in which more sensitive areas take up more space. This means areas representing the hands and face are larger while those for the limbs and torso are smaller. And then if we created a person based on that, this little person or little man, a homunculus, would look quite strange. And you can see images there of the somatosensory map in the parietal lobe and an example of a homunculus. After staring at a blue circle, Bill looks at a white screen and sees an after image of a yellow circle. Which of the following best explains this. Lateral inhibition, optic chiasm, perceptual constancy, Jung-Helmholtz trichromatic theory, or opponent process theory. And this would be E, opponent process theory. So opponent process theory for vision refers to inhibitory pairings red versus green, blue versus yellow, and black versus white, or light versus dark. Fatiguing one half of a pair causes the other to appear stronger, and this results in an illusion of a complementary color, which is known as a color after image. After losing an eye in a BB gun accident, Ralph can no longer enjoy 3D movies, which rely on Linear perspective, motion parallax, binocular disparity, interposition, relative size.
And this would be C, binocular disparity. Binocular disparity refers to the slightly different view each eye has of the world. These are combined in the brain to enhance depth perception. So 3D movies present different versions of the film to each eye using light filtering glasses. The brain then combines these into a single image which appears to have depth. This can also be referred to as retinal disparity. A dog's superior sense of smell is partly the result of it having a much greater quantity of nociceptors, olfactory bulbs, papillae, microvilli, olfactory receptors. And this would be E, olfactory receptors. Olfactory receptors on olfactory receptor neurons detect odorant molecules in the air. Depending on the breed, dogs may have about 40 times as many of these receptors as humans, giving them a vastly superior olfactory sense. Due to its concentration of cones, this area of the retina provides the sharpest vision. Is this the fovea, the cornea, the receptive field, the iris, or the blind spot? And this would be A, the fovea. The fovea is a bowl-shaped section near the center of the retina, which is composed entirely of cones and allows for the greatest visual acuity. Which of the following is not detected by gustatory cells? Bitter, spicy, umami, sweet, sour. And this would be B, spicy. So spiciness is not one of the five basic tastes detected by gustatory cells and instead results from activation of thermoreceptors in the mouth, which detect temperature. While a participant in a visual absolute threshold measurement, Rita becomes aware of tiny specks and spots in her vision, which may interfere with her ability to detect a stimulus. These are examples of response criteria, kinesthesia, texture gradient, noise, or synesthesia. And these would be examples of D, noise. In signal detection theory, anything that interferes with detecting a signal can be referred to as noise. Along with response criteria, this is one of the challenges of trying to measure absolute threshold. This fluid-filled structure contains cells which fire in response to movement caused by sound waves. Stereocilia, ossicles, basilar membrane, auditory canal, vestibular system. And this would be C, basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is a coiled structure in the cochlea, and it's uncoiled in this image here, which is lined with hair cells, or stereocilia. Sound waves move the fluid in the basilar membrane, which moves the hair cells, and that triggers neurons to fire. The vestibular system also contains fluid-filled chambers with hair cells, but these relate to head position and balance. Okay, so that's the end of these questions. I hope that you did well. I hope you found them challenging, but manageable. And I hope that you will review anything that appeared that was difficult or unfamiliar so that you'll have a good understanding of all the possible terms in this unit. And share any suggestions or questions that you have in the comments. Hope you found this helpful. If so, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.